HRV was an instant hit thanks to its space and friendly driving style, while the Suzuki Vitara is our Car of the Year class winner with good reason. More recently, Holden has stepped things up with the revised Trax, which now gets a Chevrolet-inspired nose and a much fresher interior. Then there's the Toyota CHR, which is looking to shift small SUV thinking. The CHR is very much about styling, sharp angles, muscular curves and plenty of attitude. Even inside, the design shines. Um, Toyota's done its fair share of pretty drab interiors over the years, but this one is a cracker. They've put a lot of thought into it, but detailing generally, even the doors inside, um, some interesting finishes and patterns, so a huge step up for Toyota. And the front seats are great. They've got really nice support, uh, and it's the start of a really comfortable driving experience. That refinement is helped by the engine. It's the smallest here at just 1.2 litres, and it has the least power. But there's 185 newton metres of torque, and crucially, it's produced very low in the rev range at just 1,500 revs. So performance is modest, but it's OK, and it is helped by the CVT Auto. And it's got a real maturity to the way it drives. It's clear Toyota has put a lot of effort into that. Um, it deals with smaller bumps really nicely, even bigger ones it recovers from quickly. The steering's quite nice, and overall, it's fairly refined and quiet. But the Toyota's real trick is its active safety. It's got plenty of gear, things like blind spot warning, and auto emergency braking. So up to 80 k's an hour it'll look out for other cars and so on in front and automatically apply the brakes. So a big win in this area of the market can certainly save you some uh, embarrassing insurance claims. But, and this is a sort of big but, all this goodness does come at a price and it's for anyone sitting back there. Um, even getting in the back seats is more of a challenge than the other cars. The door openings are smaller, the door handles are higher, smaller kids won't be able to reach them where they are. And once you're there, the windows are so tiny, they're so slim, so high, uh, that you just don't get the view out the side. So kids, for example, could potentially hate them, particularly if they end up getting car sick. Now that's a shame because the seats themselves are quite comfortable. There's loads of space back there. It's a surprisingly well-packaged car. It's just that you've got poor vision from the back. If you want to venture even further back, you get to the boot, which is pretty small. Um, it's very shallow, so big suitcase, for example, you're going to have to lie it flat instead of stand it up. The closest thing in principle to the CHR is this, the Honda HRV. Uh, but other than the sort of funky design and the name with three letters in it, that's about where the similarities end. In some ways, the HRV is a little bit old school in its thinking. It's the only car here, for example, without a turbocharger. Uh, it's got by far the biggest engine, even though it's only a 1.8 litre. Uh, and it's got the most power, 105 kilowatts, uh, but the least amount of torque, 172 newton metres. So a very different engine in how it goes about its business. So it's an engine that relies very much on revs to get its best. Uh, you've got to basically floor it, let the CVT wind up, get you to say 5,000 up to 6,000, uh, and let it do its business tapping into that 105 kilowatts. Now you are going to use slightly more fuel doing it. It's uh, claimed to use 6.9 litres per 100 k's, but it's the only one here that's recommended to run on regular unleaded. All the others need premium. Still, despite the fact you've got to work it sometimes, the engine is quite responsive. You don't have to wait for a turbo to spool up and get going. You just pour it and off you go. But there's probably other things that are going to appeal to someone buying an HRV, um, and it's inside where it makes up heaps of points. Space, for example, those rear seats are huge for what is a small SUV, so you've got heaps of leg room, heaps of headroom, and a big boot to match, so it's, um, uh, it is a fairly spacious car. You can get away with this being a family vehicle. It's also the most affordable here by about $1,000. To be fair, you're going to give some of that back in servicing. The first three years or 60,000 Ks will cost you over $2,000. That's almost triple what it costs to service the Toyota. The Honda is also missing some equipment, the most noticeable of which is some form of mapping. So, okay, on some cars you need to hook it up to a smartphone. In this one, you can't even do that. You've got your touchscreen, you've got all that functionality, but you aren't able to get the mapping functionality into it. Now, when it comes to value, Holden wants you to look in the direction of the tracks. Uh, it uses the same bones as the car that's been on sale here since 2013, but Holden has tarted it up. So particularly at the front, um, new headlights, new bumpers and so on. Inside as well, has copped a huge step up, so it's, uh, it's a more modern looking car than it's ever been before. The interior though is a bit of a mixed bag. You've got some interesting stitching and so on on the dash, a big colour touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, so good smartphone functionality. Uh, but at the same time, there's some average looking plastics, things that just remind you that at the end of the day, it is built to a price. It could also do with things like better seats. Um, these ones perch you up quite high, so you get good view, and indeed vision all around this car is brilliant. They've done a great job with uh, opening it up and giving it an airy feel. But they don't quite have a whole lot of lateral support. When you get in the back seats, you also notice that things are just a little cramped in the wrong direction. So uh, you don't have a whole lot of leg room, for example, uh, and the seats are sitting up higher. So again, decent vision, just not quite right. But Holden's thrown plenty of features at it. 
Uh, so this LT model we're in, it comes with 18 inch wheels. All the other cars get 17s. Um, it also gets things like a sunroof, for example, which is pretty rare in this class. So heaps of gear in there for all around the same money. These days, when you choose an automatic transmission in a Trax, you get the 1.4 litre turbo engine. So you're looking at 103 kilowatts of power and 200 newton metres of torque. So that 200 newton metres, uh, it gives you a fair bit of pull in the middle rev range. Um, the weight on the other hand, almost 1.4 tonnes, that dulls things a little bit, particularly if you want to get into it. And as you can hear there, the engine's reasonably vocal. Now speaking of noises, it's the rest of them that let the tracks down, particularly tyre noise. You can hear a lot of it just roaring away constantly under you. Um, it's definitely lacking in refinement compared with those other cars. In some ways it's showing its age. Now of course it's the Vitara that the other three are here to beat. It has been our City SUV champion at Car of the Year in 2015 and 2016. And key to its appeal is value. You get a heap for the money. So uh, a bit under 30 grand, um, you still get things like sat-nav, um, a leather steering wheel with stitching on it and a pretty cool looking interior. They've done a good job of taking basic materials and snazzing them up. There are some exceptions. The doors, for example, that is just cheap. And even the clang with the doors when you close them, you can see where money has been saved. But all of that makes for a really lightweight car. It's less than 1.2 tonnes, so around 200 kilos lighter than those other three. And where that benefits you is here. You're not having to drag as much weight around. So it's only got a 1.4 litre turbo engine, 103 kilowatts of power, 220 newton metres of torque. It's got more torque than all the others, but given it's got less weight, it is by far the perkiest. So it really um, zips along pretty nicely. It's also really fuel efficient. 5.9 litres per 100 k's is the official claim. Now another area that lightweight body helps is with the way it drives. It's got a, almost an athleticism to it. It's quite agile through the bends. Um, a little bit light in the steering, but otherwise a pretty good little thing. You've got a bit of noise going on and that's one area it's a little bit let down is in refinement. But uh, in terms of the basic package, a good spacious car, it gets a lot right. Now it's not perfect. Things like refinement, for example, have taken a back seat. So uh, some road surfaces you'll get some roaring into the cabin and there's a, a little bit of um, plastic creaking going on on the wrong road. So uh, you can see where some money has been saved. But in terms of a spacious, great value, easy to live with car and one that can do the family duties, it's a great package. So if it's your 30 grand, which small SUV do you go for? Well, we're going to rule out the Holden and the Honda straight away. Good cars, and certainly the Holden has improved markedly, but in this company, they're outclassed, which leaves us with the Suzuki and the Toyota. The Suzuki is a great little package. It benefits from that lightweight body and a great perky four-cylinder engine. The Toyota, not as quick, but every bit as comfortable, if not more comfortable, and it's also got those fantastic active safety systems. Add all that up, and the CHR is the winner this time around.